Okay guys, how are we doing? Alright, I'm back. In my match here. Call this up. I sure did this unexpectedly. I haven't done one in a while. So here's the deal. Here's what I've been doing. I came up with this paint. I watched a guy on YouTube. And I've been using that chalk paint, which is very expensive. I mean, yeah, you get a lot out of a can. I can't say you don't. Um, but what I'm doing is, I found out that his recipe worked. I tested it. I reason I didn't show you guys yet is because I was gonna try it to see if it worked. And then up here, I'd show you guys the recipe when I make another color. I just came up with this bucket here, so I could have some blue, something to change up from the brown and black. I were doing before. If you didn't watch my other video, here's what I've been making. And then I have string on them. I got a couple done here. Okay, I'm getting it in the <coughs> thing this time. Let's see, can you guys see that? Yeah. Okay. That's what I'm doing. And then it has a string up here to hold it. Those are just stickers, so I'm trying to get some stencils. So I can put stencils on them instead of that. Stencils are like, those are okay, but I like, I want something a little fancier. And I found these under mirrors. Hope you guys can see that. Uh, yep, yeah, okay. And then, right now they're not just shiny because they got a plastic coating over them. I don't want them to get scratched. But that'll give you an idea. Just out of palace again. And then, those are just stickers like these. I'm just finding these at the Dollar Tree. So I'm just taking them and cutting them up. Cutting the sayings out that I want the best I can. And put them together. I just found some of these. I'm going to try to do something with these arrows in the blue. I think that'll be really cool. I got some bigger piece of wood here. I'm gonna start dealing with. I found these things. I don't know if I can use these or not yet. But I might accent a couple of these with this. I mean, they're cardboard and they're really cheap, but we'll see. I mean, it depends on what I do, but these, I've been working on some other ones, but I can't show you guys right now. Um, I would love to. But you will get to see them later. There's one of my piece ones. And I clear coated them for a shine. Some are going to be dull, some are going to be shiny. Uh, here's my piece one, another piece one. Let's go letters and the light wood. Just some different ones to do. I'm going to be putting these out at the um, market here. So let's see what's this green here. I made some little marks on here. Give myself an idea of where I want them to be. And these seem to be. I don't ever stick them directly. Try to line them up first. center out. I hope you guys can see this with all the junk in the wire. Them is quite big, so I'm trying to space these. Oh, we're drifting. Why you don't stick them permanently? I should do it. I do this on my lines. My is still real low. Always my E. I need to go up there. That's a way better idea. I think we're gonna do that more.
I don't get that mess with them, they're not going to stick. See what we think. Are they ready to stick? Telling you about stickers, you don't know how good they're going to stick or how long they're going to stick. All you can do is hope for the best. have a dream one. And all I did was, with the paint here, if you watch a guy go online punch in um, how to make chalk paint. And it's just your different colors of paint, whatever you want to make. I just, just took some green and blue and a little yellow and white and made the color I wanted. And then I added um, Durabond, which is like plaster of Paris you can add. Um, if you know anything about drywall, it's Durabond is a very hard, it turns very, very hard. And it gives it that nice chalky feeling. I mean, it actually gives you the chalky feeling on the wood. And you just add uh, one to three. The three parts paint, one part um, plaster. It's either plaster or Paris. Uh, you could use drywall mud, um, which would be, I, I would prefer the powder, I would recommend the powder. Like 45, um, any of them. You can. Take the plaster of Paris and mix it up, which is going to give you a nice hard. It gives you a nice hard surface on top of it with the paint. It actually seals it, and makes it hard. When that plaster dries, it don't just give it a paint finish, but it actually gives it a hard finish. So I don't think I'm even going to have to clear coat these or spray them or anything. But I think that paint's going to stay on there pretty good. And I just took a little sandpaper and distressed it just a little bit on the edges to give you give it that little worn look on the corners and the edges. I thought maybe that'd go good with the gold, showing the yellow through. And then the paint, just to be bright, something different. And then we'll put a, a debate on whether I want to put a hook on that. I might just put a hook on the back. And all I did was, these were just drawer covers. My drawer, and I just filled them in with Durabond, plastered them, and I'm going to paint the back. Same thing. And I'll just get a light color of the blue, just to protect it. And then I'm going to put them little brackets on, I think, for, for the hang of pictures on it. I'm going to get a bunch of them. See if I can find me a big pack of those. But yeah, like I said, just Google um, chalk paint, how to make chalk paint. It really works. I mean, it saves you a lot of money. You can buy, make as much, I mean, a little bottle, a little 8 ounce container of paint, you can get for $3. Which is like this at Home Depot or Lowe's. That's eight ounces of paint, and that's quite a bit of paint. And I didn't even use, I used two cups of regular um, wall paint. I used the blue actually for my wall here in the room. And then added in the white, the yellow, and the green to get this blue. The blue's really popular right now. I notice I've been seeing a lot in the stickers and the paints and the furniture, people painting furniture and painting all kinds of stuff with it. So I thought to add some different color besides the plain black and gray. So with this, we're going to do as many as I can of them, coming up with whatever we're saying. I'm going to do some long ones, some short ones. Like I said, it just, I mean, it goes on. This is pretty clean. I can show you guys. It goes on really easy. I mean, the paint is just unbelievable, and it spreads just great. And it, if you use a the soft brush, you'll get less streaks in it, which the streaks don't matter because you want sort of the streaks to show through. 
because you want it to give it that weathered look. Now if you want to make it completely one color, just do two or three coats and very light soft brush and you'll find that it settles pretty well. I'm using very little on my brush and it spreads great and like I said it, it covers really good with the um, even over the plaster pair or the Gerbond and it gives you a nice chalky feeling just enough but make sure when you mix it you mix the Gerbond with the water and sort of make like a slurry and then pour it in your paint don't pour the powder right into the paint because you end up with way too many clumps. Just take it, put it in a bowl, put your third of a cup, if you're doing one to three, and you're using a cup of paint, and just mix in a third of a cup of your plaster pairs or whatever your powder you're going to use. Mix that in a cup with a little bit of water and just keep stirring it until it's just a little bit runny. Not Just where it just starts to run off the whatever you're mixing it with. And that will give you enough then when you mix it and pour it in there, it'll mix a lot easier for you and just stir it very, very well. Make sure all your pumps are out, make sure there's no chunks in it, and just keep whipping it until it's nice and smooth. Pour it in your paint, stir your paint up, and start painting. And that's what you got. And you can see it's a nice finish. That's just one coat. Like I said, I used, it was a satin paint. I would rather use flat. So once I can get me some flat paint, I'm going to get me a couple containers that I showed you. Like this, with different colors. For three bucks, are the different colors in flat though, instead of the satin. My wife was using these for her birdhouses, but the satin color is okay. It still gives you a nice chalky finish, and actually gives me a little durability with this uh, satin finish. I think that's what's giving it the nice shine and the protection on it. But like I said, that's it. And I got other stuff I've been working on, but I can't show you guys. Um, This is one of them, you'll recognize it later, but I can't show you the other side yet. It's been a project I've been working on for a little over a week here, and mainly because I'm trying to get something done to get out, and it's been a lot of work. Um, plus making these, plus mowing grass, plus working. I've been really busy. That's why I've made too many videos lately. I just been so dang busy to sit down and actually do anything. I got my fairy garden to start. I got the box all built. I need to get started on another fairy box. My frog town's done. I'm running out of room. I need to get to the market. My truck will hopefully be done this weekend. And I'll be going to the market and selling a bunch of this. <coughs> and I made some... <coughs> coffee ones the coffee lovers I'm debating now whether I'm going to put these on string or just make them where you can just set them somewhere like so like on your counter or whatever so I haven't decided on those yet but just to give you guys an idea I came up with this this was a drawer too and I cut it in half and I'm going to put some a word in here and then make leave the shelf and I think I'm going to do that um, <clears throat> with a candle. I'm debating on putting a candle on there. Or something to... Or just leave them open. I don't know yet. I haven't decided. Put these here. I can show you how I do the antiquing on these. This one's dry. I'll have to get a brush. And I got a little bit of white on the tray here. Never throw away the paper uh, plates. We found these. So now we're gonna, like I said, just get a little on your brush you can, and just slightly start touching it. Now, touch it in a pattern. Just get the paint off the brush first. And you're gonna go back and you're gonna brush all that in. And you take your brush until it's dry. 
Once you have no more pain, I know a lot of people do it differently, but this is how I do it. And to me it seems like it blends a little better. It just looks like it's really worn. And it gets right into the color. Otherwise, you know, it was sort of a glob. I didn't want a glob, I want it to sort of fade. To not show the brush marks. So what I'm doing is when I brush it like this, I'm sort of fading it away to a nothing. Sort of like if you ever watch Bob Ross make his clouds and his paintings. Sort of the same thing. You just sort of blending it in there like that and fluffing it away until it's fluffier and you don't have the streaks and the lines so much. Nothing special. Just like I said, just make sure your lines are going the same way as your grain. That's your most important thing. You don't want to run crossways on it. Them lines will not go with what you're doing. It's going to look a little funny then. So what we're going to do is just keep blending these in. A little glob there, but by brushing, it'll just be a worn out spot. And there, just fade them, blotches away to nothing. <coughs> and that's about it. Maybe a little bit on the edge here. I thought I had some, but I didn't. Oop, a little too much there. You gotta watch that so if your paint really touches it. You're going to get a heck of a glob. I don't want that. And just keep feeding it. Your brush will dry it itself. And <coughs> once it dries, with a little bit of paint you had on there, I'm holding it over here. that is is looking like the older paint wore off the other paint and then you got a primer paint under it and I always do my edges a little bit it gets that grainy look then pull it in over your edges with a little extra paint on it I do that towards the end and that's like right here I just pull off my edges And a little lighter, a little lighter streaks on top of the darker, or vice versa, it's the darker on top of the lighter, like the black on that tan. <coughs> Seem to give it a really nice look <coughs> on the grain. It gives you that grain like the grain just really warm right there, like it's been dragged or pulled or something across it. And I just sort of brush them out a little bit. Just real lightly fade them. Okay guys, my battery went dead. I put new batteries in it. Uh, she's good for a few now. And like I was saying, distressing it with that ear paper. And then now you got a nice chalky surface to work with. To put whatever you want in there. <coughs> I don't know what I'm going to do for these yet as far as designing them. Uh, my wife just came up with a good idea. She gave me some stars. Like these. These little stars. So I think what I'm going to do is... She said a good one would be to take something like this one. Maybe the other one I got. That's what I can do. This one here. Uh, this one has a bigger back on it. So I think what we'll do is... We're going to trace the stars on here. I think I'm going to paint it the midnight blue on the back. It should be a nice dark blue. I know we'll put Dream across here with the stars in here. And I'll trace the stars around it and paint them white. And then the Dream will be white. And I think that'll be cool because I don't have no enough with the Dream on it. So I can do it with. Stars and moons. Oh. Yeah, it's just that the moons too. So I'll have to make some. Carve some moons out out of some paper or something, make some little moons. 
put like one or two moons on there and some stars and then a dream and then I could put a night light or something on here or his favorite toy could do blocks but I don't know I guess I could let them just decorate it for what shelf they want it to be it could be a picture of them for them whatever now I wish I wouldn't have put my dream on there my mirrored dream would have been really good on there so I'm going to have to work on those I need to get some more of those and that'll work out good but I'm going to take you guys to the market when I go flea market and I'll show you guys around and everything and then we're going to take all the stuff that I work I make I'm going to take pictures and put them up as I go and I'll show you guys some more of these as I do it like this one I'll get the paint and I'll have this one up maybe when I paint this one and do it um in the dark blue and we'll see how that works <coughs> I like this blue I think this blue would work just as good maybe I'll just do this in two coats and that's a dark blue I don't know, we'll see. But I'll take you guys to the flea market when we go. I'm going to take all these and sell them with my fairy gardens. I'm going to try to get the other one knocked out too. I mean, i got a couple days here of this week. But hopefully by this weekend, we can either go and I can take what I got. Or I'll go next weekend and I'll take you guys and I'll have the other um, fairy garden done, which is going to be um, another enchanted garden with the lights on it. So... I gotta get my butt working on these and figure out what I'm gonna do. I have some more over here. I can show you guys. I have these bigger ones. They're a piece of pine. Yes, they're very big. And I'm thinking about making a bigger sign with these. And so I think we're gonna antique these the same way in the blue. And then what it is is tongue and groove inside pine it's from somebody's you use this in your walls and you know you use it for planking for whatever we're making but I'm just going to flip it over and I'm going to use a tongue and groove that I have built in to put the boards together with and I'll just glue them and then tack them with some nails but I'm thinking about making one big sign with these or I'll cut these in half and I mean, you can see the size of them they're pretty long they're about Let's see, we got, there's a foot, two foot, so about two and a half foot here of wood. And I have a bunch of them, so I'm debating on what I want to do with them. I got some shorter ones I think I'm going to use. And I have a big stack here in my bedroom, I have a white bulb in there, at the end of the bed. Okay, I'll give you an idea where I'm going to do with these. These were sanded. I said I didn't sand, so I have to sand that again. Get rid of the stars. And like I said, we're just going to take the blue. That's why I made so much of this up. I wanted it so I could make a bunch of these signs out. In fact, I think we're going to go with a bigger brush on this one. This is bigger wood. It does not matter what kind of brush you use. Like I said, you're just looking for it to get a little bit of that color on it. More than less. There's a little crack there. We're going to see if we can fill it with some paint. And just brush over it. And we're going to spread that way out. Use all that up. Like I said, just mainly just keep sure you're always going the same way. Don't crisscross. Some people do. They say it feathers it in better. I mean, I've noticed a lot of them will go like this, and then they go like that. Get rid of their brush marks, but I just brush it all in and try to get as much of it as I can covered. And like I said, I don't put it on super heavy. I want some of that grain to show through, so I always come down here and pick up the excess. The only thing I do, I try to cover up by any of the knots, like that, or the holes. extra there, got a little thin, and this stuff dries pretty quick, I mean with that uh, dirt bond in here, it helps absorb the moisture once it hits the air, and dirt bond dries quick by itself, if you ever work with it, plaster or Paris or any of that, 
we add warm water to it as the temperature goes up, which is warm in here. It's drying quite quickly. And I have a fan running in my room here in the window. So the air is coming out, which I get to see. It just, I mean, it's a perfect coat of paint. Right, I wish you guys could see how smooth that is. I mean, it is really smooth. No bumps, no nothing. <laughs> Let's see how good I can zoom in on this one for you. And seriously, it is so smooth. And the blue came out so nice. I just been seeing this blue on everything, everywhere. And that's usually what I'll check to see, go through and look at pictures or trends or what people are buying. I mean, just watch Chris and Holly show. They find most of the perfect stuff as there is. Can't ask for better. My daughter just got jealous of watching Holly um, find all them bags in the dumpster. So she just started dumpster diving. She's actually beat me to getting out and doing that. She said she was tired of watching them do it, so she went out and found some good stuff, some arrows, a clock, oh, trunk load, the car, or car trunk's full, filled her car up with it, so I was like, well, good job, she got on, uh, on Facebook already, selling it all, alright, we're going to let that one dry a little bit, and that's all we're going to do is just keep blowing, making them blue, and then I'll antique that at the end, and I'll show you what the sign is I make out of it. I haven't decided yet what it's going to be. I sort of just decide that as I go. When I pick up the wood, I look at it, see what'll fit a couple times. Got the different words on it. But I'm thinking about like a beach one, or um, going to the beach, or I made a whole big list of words I want to go together with. Um. You can come up pretty much anything. I mean, you name it, put it on the sign, you know. Kitchen, pantry, um, beach here, um, dream, love, faith. I mean, you name it. God bless. We're going to have about all peace. I'm hoping to find some more of these big letters and words so I can do some more. I really want to do something with these arrows. I think they're pretty cool when I've seen them. And I think arrows are really popular too for some reason now. That's why I grabbed them. It's got a little wrinkle in it. Um, but yeah, these I think will be really cool against that blue. Because they got some neat blue in them. So I could do the same thing on them. Just put arrows. Put this arrow on there. And we could put going to the beach or beach this way. Who knows? I mean, we'll come up with something. But letting each one dry and that's the paint of it. You just gotta do one board at a time, let it dry. Then you can antique it. Like I said, it's just I bought a little bit of dust that's on there. I don't know what the heck that is. That's not gonna look good on my stuff. Like a glue or something. I don't know why it didn't come off with the sander. I must have picked it up afterwards. I must have set it on something. I always keep myself a piece of sand paper handy. And a damp rag. I just pick up a little bit of dust. And yes, people, you don't have to be perfect about this stuff. It's free wood, free paint. Which I did pay for some of the paint originally, but when you combine it, it makes that much out of it. Let's go with the big one. Yes, that's why we did that in the first place. And this is my white rag and dip it in the paint and see how I said a little wet brush does not hurt because it helps thin that paint out. This paint's thick by the way to an extent because it's um, got that plaster in there so you don't want to leave it open that's for sure not long or uncovered because you will regret that it will turn to a thick paste on you real quick 
So that's why I feel I'd get a bunch of boards ready here. Get them painted, let them dry, and I can put them together after I've antiqued them. But I'm just loving the finish from this stuff. It is just so perfect. It's like giving the glaze almost. And it's try it, you'll be amazed. I'm telling you. Satin finish seems like it might be a little better. Because it seems to be working really good with that plaster. To give me a great finish on here. It's hard to see on the camera like that, but you'll see them maybe once I get them out in the light. And you'll see how nice and smooth they are. I mean, I can really see my brush strokes are just disappearing. It's got a nice, smooth. Okay, I got the scissors popped apart. It's got the crap out of me when I don't. Uh, okay, there's no one down. These edges here ain't going to matter as much, but I think I'm going to do them because they, they overlap. I'm going to get these a little heavier so they don't have so much. So you got, it's like a little rougher edge. So I'm just going to take a little extra paint and rub that in there. I want some of the holes to show through, just not a lot. Then I'm going to put a sandpaper to that. Them there don't matter because that's the groove that's going inside. Unless they decide to take that off. Then I'll have to figure out something about the ends. What I'm going to do with them. And yep, I'm just standing them up and letting them dry. So, I'll probably conclude this here pretty soon because you're going to see me watch me do the same thing over and over. You get the idea now. And then you just antique it afterwards with your white, blue, black. I mean, you can do any all different colors. Then just like I said, hit it with the sandpaper around your edges. Everywhere that is just sticking up, hit it with that sandpaper and that'll take that little bit of paint off and give you that distressed look. I mean, I was antiquing them before, I guess, just distressing them. But even the different colors fade through, the thinner your paint is, and that nice chalky paint. I mean, this finish is unreal. It seems like it's going to be really durable with that plaster. It seems like to have coated it with like a plaster coating. We sort of protected everything and give it a nice hard coating on there. So I think this is going to be really durable. I mean, I was worried about scuffing it, but I don't seem to be. Usually, what I'll do is take one afterwards and, like my ring, if that don't scuff it when I'm rubbing, or I'll take up something and rub on it and see how much marks it makes. That's what made me come up with the um, clear coat on my peace sign and my love sign. You can see the difference. There's a shine to this one compared to that one. Hope you guys can see it. Shine on that. Let me see if I can see it through there. Yeah, you can see the glossy shine there. How it just fades out. That's the glare from the shine. Okay, and this one here has none. As you can see, it's dull. If I can get the light right, that's a very dull finish, and that's what you get with the chalky paint. I mean, I'm telling you, it's. <laughs> I made all that for. I mean, I took a little over a cup, a cup and a half of regular house paint, the blue here, on my walls. Um, a third of a cup of one of them little containers of paint that was yellow and some green to get me my lighter blue and then just a dab of white to lighten it and that was it and then rest was the plaster and mixing it so five bucks you could probably make a gallon so give it an experiment try it it's worth it come up with your own paint and your own colors it's always worth it dream explore have fun <laughs> Have fun with life. Don't fight it. Go with it. It's a lot more fun. God's already got it planned out. You just better just follow it. What he says. And fight it. That's where we go wrong. We try to go our own way and do what we want. What we think is right. What you is wrong. So. Peace. Till the next one. See what we can do. 
getting the fairy garden up and uh, stickers on these and I'll show you guys some more I'll put some more snapshots up and we'll get the other ones once I get working on these I'll put them up with it and we'll do another quick video of these hope to take you guys exploring like I said to the market and you guys can take a look at that and watch me sell these see what we do how good we do all right later for now